show, I'm Sid and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to do this effect which is the sort of, I don't know, coloured eyes, demonic eyes, I don't know what you'd call this, you can have any colour you want, I'm using white as an example. This is the finished product, as you can see it tracks onto my eyes quite nicely even when I'm blinking, which is cool. So uh, yeah, basically I'm going to show you how to do all of that. What you're going to need is Spark AR Studio the face reference assets pack and a photo editing software program. I'm going to be using GIMP today but Photoshop works just the same and uh, you can use the similar tutorials so they're, they're, they will work functionally the same way. Uh, but yeah, so let's start a new project and I'll minimize that one in the background for now and I'll show you the way that we do this. So before we do anything in Spark AR I'm going to open up GIMP and I'm going to use my face texture filters, which are over here somewhere. <laughs> reference assets. So, yeah, here are our reference assets, and there's a beard for some reason. <laughs> there's lots of stuff just everywhere when you do this. Uh, yeah, so here's our textures, and I'm going to be using the masculine face for this because I have a masculine face. Uh, and I might as well pull this in just just to see what's up and this one, why not? we'll pull them all in every time just to see which one works best so yeah basically you want to figure out where you're at or oh, maybe this is good, I think this one actually is a good idea and then add a layer and we'll call it eyes because I've already done this and I'm just running over it uh, once you have your eyes highlighted like this with the mesh, you can zoom in. You can turn over here to a paintbrush. I'm not sure why it's shaped like oh, beard. Yep, so we'll grab a normal paintbrush. We'll pull down the size to around I don't know, 15. Maybe even a little smaller. Maybe something like 10. No, not 10. Yeah, that kind of works. And then, uh, oh, you know, it's even a better idea. Why am I not thinking of this ahead of time? I'll just do what I did the first time around. <laughs> Basically, this is the lasso tool. And I should have thought of this before. But every time I start filming these videos, I get a little bit distracted. So with the lasso tool, you can sort of select an area that you want to separate from the rest and then we can go over here to our paint bucket and we can change the colour to let's say black oh cool fancy black or as we're doing right now or let's do true bright red red looks pretty cool you zoom out you can see there's the dude with red eyes lovely uh, but yeah we're going to go with white for this tutorial so Bright white eyes. Bright white eyes. Uh, yep, so we've got that done. Let's get back over to here. What we're going to do next is we're going to duplicate this layer and then click the transform option, or oh sorry, flip option. Which when you flip on. Oh man, that was I was having this problem before. Like the thing that I was trying to flip wasn't flipping. Flip, flip, flip. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to start this video again. I'm just going to see you skip ahead. <laughs> I knew what I was doing like literally two seconds ago when I figured when I practiced this. I can't, I can't tell what I've forgotten. Uh, so let's duplicate that. And then to hell with it, I'm just gonna flip it and then straight up move it myself. See, we figure things out on the go, we make it work. So, there you go. By now, come back to the main. Oh, I'll make this invisible. Oh, where's my mesh? We'll get rid of the mesh, we zoom out. As you can see, look, now I have these nice, beautiful eyes. 
Lovely. Uh, and so now what I'm going to do is make this layer invisible so that we have both eyes on the PNG file. We'll save that as white eyes.png. Make sure you save it to your desktop so that it's easy to get to, or if you have a specific folder, save it there. We're all learning together. <laughs> so now what you're going to want to do is come back over here to Spark AR. You're going to want to add a face mesh to your scene the one we set up before. Once you have a face mesh that will be tracking your face there. You want to add a material layer and once you have your material layer you come down here and set to flat. So you want it to sort of sit flat on the face and we're going to choose the file texture white eyes which we just made. Oh no, as you can see kind of just looks more like white eyeliner right now uh, and if I come over to the camera here you see the same problem it's just sort of white around the edges that's because we haven't we're, uh, the, the mesh that we're using is currently tracking both the mouth here and our eyes so if you uncheck this box it totally cleans up the issue segments that layer out and perfectly tracked your eyes. So yeah, basically this is the effect. Uh, just a quick video summarizing it. I might make another shorter video where I don't say anything uh, and <laughs> just run through it very quickly uh, for those people who may be more interested in things like that. Like I said, uh, I'm new to this channel, I'm new to making videos, so this whole thing's kind of learn on the go. If you like what you see, subscribe, leave a comment, I don't know, let me know if you want to see anything else because I've noticed that a few people have seen these videos already, and that's kind of cool. So, yeah, thanks for watching. Bye. After the fact, I just exported this uh, pro project to test on my phone, and uh, when I did, when I exported it to test, I found that there was some blurring around the eyes. I'll, maybe I'll upload a screenshot of that, but uh, or add it in the corner. Now I have to edit this anyway. But yeah, uh, so basically I'm going to show you quickly how to fix that. If you come down here to the actual texture, because it's a very, very small image, it doesn't always render, uh, it, the, 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 the file doesn't always render in the highest resolution. So sometimes it gets compressed and you want to just click manual compression here. You want to set that as no compression. And under project, you can edit the properties down here and there's a compression setting. And in this case, for this project, you want to set it up to 100%. And then when you save and export that. Now, even though it looks similar on the desktop, uh, on your phone when you test it, you'll be able to see the difference. You can also just do it yourself. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, see what I mean. But yeah, I'll try and include a screenshot. Thanks for sticking around, I guess. That's all. Stay good, my dudes. I don't know.